again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at a magical piece of the Oracle database and it's something called the SGA. SGA stands for System Global Area and it's nothing more than a big chunk of memory that Oracle is going to grab and allocate to itself when the instance starts up. Why does Oracle do this? Why was it set up this way? Well, if you looked at my other videos on architecture, <coughs> uh, I talked about that there are three main pieces uh, of an Oracle database that you need to be concerned with, right? There's stuff going on in memory, there's stuff going on on disk, and there's processes that run that maintain the connection between memory and disk. And in that other architecture video, what did we say the pros of memory are? Well, the pros of memory are that it's super fast, and the cons are that it's very expensive. Memory is much more expensive than disk is. Disk is obviously the exact opposite, right? It's nice and cheap, that's its pro, but the con is, is that it's really slow. So Oracle is set up to do as much stuff in memory as it possibly can. And occasionally a process will wake up and write the stuff out to disk, but we want to batch that information and write it out to disk as, as efficiently as possible. We don't want to keep going out to disk over and over again. That's very inefficient. We want to do as much stuff in memory, batch it together, write it out to disk. So what are the three, the main pieces of the system global area? Well, there's a lot of things that are make up the system global area, but there's three main ones that you need to concern yourself with. One is called the data buffer cache. One is called the redo log buffer. And the other one's called the shared pool. And the shared pool is made up of two pieces. The shared pool is made up of the library cache and the dictionary cache. What do all of these pieces do? The data buffer cache holds data, data that's been queried, data that's been modified. Oracle is going to hold that in memory, and again, these processes will wake up every now and then and say, hey, i got a whole bunch of stuff here I need to write out to disk. Boom, writes it out to disk for permanent storage. So the data buffer cache is going to hold actual uh, blocks of data that have been queried or modified in some way, and it'll hold that stuff in memory for processing. The redo log buffer is um, an area of the SGA where a service pro uh, the server processes makes changes to data blocks uh, in the redo log buffer. And the, the redo log buffer records the block that's changed, location of the change, the new value of the redo entry. It records the old and new values of changed uh, data blocks. And what the redo log buffer really exists for is for database recovery. It's very hard to lose a transaction inside of an Oracle database, even if something catastrophic happens like a power failure or uh, something else happens on your system. It's really hard to lose a transaction. Uh, Oracle is set up to maintain all these different pieces of information, and the redo log buffer holds all of that transactional information before it gets written out to disk. So even if you know a, a transaction completes and a millisecond later the power goes down, you won't lose that information because uh, Oracle is very efficient at doing that. So the redo log buffer is a piece of the SGA that holds that. So we got the data, data, buffer cache, that's one of the big pieces of the SGA, and then you got the redo log buffer, that's another piece of this memory, redo log buffer, and then you got the shared pool, and like I said, there's other things inside the SGA, but for the most part, these are the big ones that you have to worry about, and as part of the shared pool, you got these two pieces, one's the library cache, and one's the dictionary cache, so you got the library cache, and the dictionary cache. So we talked about the data buffer cache, we talked about the redo log buffer. What is inside the library cache and the dictionary cache? Well, the library cache contains something called an execution plan and a parse tree for SQL statements running against the database. What in the world does that mean? Well, anytime I run a statement against the database, Oracle breaks it down and says, okay, what's the most efficient way for me to go and get the data needed to bring it back to the user? Uh, do I use an index? Do I use uh, a join? What type of join am I going to use to gather information? Uh, do I do a full table scan? 
statement. So we parse out the statement. We can have some really complex statements, especially if we're going against a whole bunch of different tables and we're joining stuff together. And maybe we're going through a database link and then another piece is going against a view somewhere. Some of them have indexes, some of them don't. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways we can gather information out of our Oracle database. And the optimizer is going to look at the SQL statement, break it down, and say, okay, this is the most efficient way to go and get the data. Another nice thing about the library cache is that it'll store that information, not forever, but it'll store that information about the query so that if another user runs the same query, Oracle doesn't have to break it down, doesn't have to parse it, doesn't have to determine the execution plan. It says, oh, I've seen this query before. I know how to get the data. I'll just go out this way and, and grab it and pull it back. So those are some real nice ways of gaining some efficiencies inside your database. Dictionary cache holds things, information about the actual tables and views and uh, other pieces of your Oracle database, like column definitions, view definitions, roles, authorizations, permissions, synonyms, uh, sequence definitions. The dictionary cache holds all of that sort of stuff. So for example, if I try to insert a character into a field that's been defined as a number, it's a dictionary cache that's going to check that information. I try to do an insert or an update, it's going to say, hey, this is a number field. You can't insert XYZ into that. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to generate an error. Dictionary cache holds all of that information. So we want to size all of these different pieces as efficiently as we possibly can, right? In a perfect world, what would we do? We'd have the entire database loaded into memory. And Oracle can do everything into memory, and the only time it would have to go out to disk is when you were going to shut down the server. You'd have to flush out memory, write it all out to disk. That would be the most efficient way to do it. But databases these days are gargantuan. You know, years ago, a 10 gig or a 20 gig database was a really big, da big database. Now we're talking about terabytes and petabytes and the exabytes and these enormous databases. There's no way I can keep everything in memory. So I'm going to try to size these as best I can. So uh, what are the uh, so these um, the sizing of each one of these components is defined inside the init.ora file. Init.ora is what sets all of the different parameters for my particular instance. So my init.ora file, sorry, that's a, I got a good period there. I have these different parameters, right? For the data buffer cache, I have this thing called db cache size. For my redo log buffer, I have this parameter called log buffer. For the shared pool, I have shared pool size. And these parameters are going to determine the size of each one of these guys. In the tuning videos that we're going to create, we're going to look at determining, hey, did I size these guys properly? And what are the things that I can look at inside my database to, you know, give me a hint as, you know, well, maybe my shared pool size is the wrong size. Maybe it's too big. Maybe it's not big enough. Maybe the log buffer isn't big enough. We're going to take a look at some tuning videos that will go through that. But for now, we're just going to look at how to size each one of these guys in the init.ora. So I've created this query inside of my SQL developer here. The query is a lot of the major ones that we're looking at. There's shared pool size, there's log buffer, there's DB cache size. And you can see that I'm querying these out of a view called v$parameter. So I'm going to take a look at the name and the value for each one of these guys. So I'm going to execute it right now. Got some weird values here. Shared pool size is zero. DB cache size is zero. How can that possibly be, right? I can't have a database that doesn't have a database cache or a shared pool size. I got to have some of these things defined in memory. Well, in Oracle 10G, it there's a new feature that was introduced, and it was called automatic memory management. If you use the database configuration assistant, uh, by default, it chooses automatic memory management. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. But if you choose to take all of the defaults uh, that go through there, what automatic mem memory management basically does is say, hey, I'm going to just define this value for my SGA, and I'm just going to turn it over to Oracle. Oracle, you handle sizing of the data buffer and the shared pool size and the library cache and the redo log buffer. You handle doing all of that sort of stuff. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about any of the details. How do we know it's turned on? Well, we have this parameter here called memory target. If memory target is turned on, you can see it's set to two gigs here. If memory target is turned on, we're using automatic, automatic memory management, AMM, to uh, monitor our database. We also have this memory max target that says, OK, under certain conditions, maybe we'll let the SGA grow a little bigger. 
uh, if we're under um, you know a, a lot of transactions that are going in our in our database, a lot of activity inside of our database for whatever reason, we'll let the database grow a little bit. In this example, both memory target and memory max target are set to the same value. So we got this two gig chunk of memory. So in this example here, let me get back to here. This chunk that I grabbed as part of the SGA is two gigabytes in my particular server setup right now and we're not worrying about any of the details about the size of the shared pool about the size of the log buffer we just turn it over to Oracle actually we do have the log buffer here we do specify the size of the log buffer but in terms of the shared pool and the uh, the data buffer we're just gonna turn it over to Oracle how do I know if I've sized this properly maybe it's way off maybe you know it's way too small or way too big I'm chewing up a whole bunch of resources Oracle provides this view that allows me to go through and say, okay, have I sized this properly? And if we select star from this view called vdollar memory underscore target underscore advice, and we order it by memory size, right, execute that guy, you'll see Oracle comes back and it brings me back this table full of estimates of what would happen if I change the size of the automatic memory management. So the memory size factor of one here is what it's currently set to. So there's my two gigs. So there's this estimated database time, estimated database time factor. You can see that Oracle is saying, you know, if I increased it to 2,500 or three gigs or 3.5 gigs or four gigs, the different memory size factors here, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change my database time. It's not going to change my database time factor at all. So increasing the size of my SGA isn't going to do anything. As a matter of fact, I can probably shrink it down pretty comfortably here, right? If I shrink it down by a factor of three quarters and I shrink it down to 1500, again, the database time to do its work, the database time factor isn't going to change anything. So I'm probably wasting resources. If I shrink it down by a factor of 50% uh, or I shrink it down to one gig, there's a little bit of a change difference. You know, it changes, estimated database time goes up a little bit, the database time factor goes up a little bit. But again, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands, you know, we're talking about three thousandths of a percent that I'm going to change. So it probably won't even hurt me to shrink the database down by a factor of half where I can shrink it down to a thousand. But this query is really nice to let you know if you're um, using AMM, automatic memory management, if you've sized your SGA properly. This is a real nice query to give you an indication of doing that. And this will be updated as more and more activity goes on in your database. This makes sense because my database really is just kind of sitting there, the sandbox database I'm just using for demos. I don't have users or developers actively doing anything against it. So this is a, a pretty good indication that my database is sized a little bigger than what it really needs to be. But it's a real nice way of um, showing you if you're using AMM, if you've sized things properly. So that's the basics of the system global area. System global area is a chunk of memory where Oracle is going to do a lot of its processing. We want to do as much stuff in memory as we possibly can because memory is a lot more efficient than going to disk. But obviously memory is a lot more uh, expensive, so we have to make sure that what we set up in memory is using memory as efficiently as possible.